I left my spot and focus in the fall. I'm sorry, William. Can we please do something with this? Can we go back to then? Please. We have way too much power to be making life and death decisions like this. Okay, so we need to get it in focus. I can't remember how I do it. Oh, no, how do I do it? Okay, that's not in focus. That's almost in focus. How do I do it? Okay, seriously? I have to click and hold, but it's not exactly telling me that, is it? Okay. Now is it in focus? No. I'll just keep holding it until it does something. It's taking me away from my emotional moment here. Probably a good thing, because otherwise I would just be sitting here crying in this commentary. Okay, wait. It's not doing it. Come on. Do something. Okay. Okay, it's really not doing anything. Like, that's about as close as I can get it to be in focus. Hmm. I'm starting to get frustrated. <laughs> uh, like, am I missing something? Okay, criticism. This really takes you out of the emotional moment when it now gives you this tricky fucking thing that does not explain what the hell you're supposed to... Excuse me, what you're supposed to do. Because I can use both like the right mouse button and the left mouse button to change the focus, but that's about as close as it's getting. And then what do, like, what do I do from here? Because nothing is happening. Try pressing both, nothing happening. Huh. I'm confused. Alright, let me pause the recording as I work this. Okay, so I had to look up a guide on Steam and it says to use A and D at the same time as well. So here we go. Okay, not that did not say once about using A and D, so that is a criticism of the game here and hopefully they'll fix that in the next update. Someday Dad will get one of them newfangled computers. I hope the flash didn't scare you, Max. This is a keeper. Hello? Hey, honey. What? Oh, I didn't know you had to get groceries. Of course I'll come pick you up. Shit, where are my keys? That's a dollar for the swear jar. You mean your college fund. Please forgive. Aha! You can't hide from me forever. And no Chloe and Max wine tasting session. Dad! Don't blow it, because tonight your mother promised to make us a world-famous salmon surprise with chocolate cake for dessert. Max, you'll be here too, right? She's never leaving me. That makes all of us. Oh, gosh. Max, you are being so fucking strange. Like, you're never gonna see us again. Chloe, I'm so sorry. I tried to make things different for you. I... I did try. I'm sorry. I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but... Come on. You have made things different. Like, my whole life. You're my best friend. 
I've got you and a great family. What's to be sorry for? We'll be best friends forever. And when we grow up, we're taking over the world. Listen, whatever happens, I want you to be strong. Even if you feel like I wasn't there for you. Because I will never abandon you, Chloe. I'll always have your back. Always. So... William did die. Okay. And she went on to marry David. And there's a Chloe we know and love. And that must be Chloe of Rachel Amber. And that was Chloe with Nathan uh, very back in episode one. Okay, so where are we now in this timeline? That's a drawing of, um, excuse me, that's a drawing that me and Chloe did when we were younger. Or Max and Chloe, I should say. And we've taken upstairs to Chloe's room and pinned things on it. Chloe. You're alive, yes. Whoa, whoa, down, Max. You get one kiss, now you're all over me? I'm just... I'm just... I'm so glad you're here. You sound high, but thanks for the morning grope. <laughs> Since we were up all night playing CSI Arcadia Bay, I was still spaced out here trying to put all this info together. Max, did you forget we've gone over this? I hope you weren't messing around with time while I was sleeping. Not anymore. I'm just spaced out too. Welcome back to the real world, Max. The I don't think I can ever tell Chloe about what happened. The problem with all this time morphing thing is I feel like it invalidates a lot of her choices. Let's look at the big board and see all our pieces in the puzzle so far. But we're here, so... We'll take it. I'm lost in all the time. That's my Chloe. The Bad Girl's Guide to Guns by Coffee Greer. Shit. I could go coffee. Suck it. Okay. Uh. Damn. This is a serious expose on the Prescotts. Finally. The Great Northwest, the Prescott's Pan Estates, Heaven or Hell by Craig Kennedy. The name Prescott may not mean much to you or to those outside the edges of small coastal Oregon town. But this is a name that means quite a bit in Arcadia Bay, a quaint town seemingly stuck in time. Once home to a prosperous fishing and tourism industry, the town has seen much better paydays despite the local success of the prestigious Blackwell Academy and its football and swimming teams, the Bigfoots and the Otters. Environmental changes to the area have reduced the amount of fish and other sea life, resulting in a stagnant economy and limited tourism. Oddly, the Prescotts have managed to keep their business interests quite profitable. In fact, they're behind the expensive, exclusive housing development known as Pan Estates, to be built into the deep forest near Blackwell Academy. Local Native American groups have already filed various motions against the development, citing widespread destruction of tribal lands and natural resources. Continued on the next page. Don't mind me, just taking a photo. <laughs> she really doesn't seem to mind, did she? She was just like, ah, oh, okay. I wish I could tell Chloe how much William cared about her. I'm sure she knows. She must know, right? Even Holmes and Watson didn't use every piece of information. Yeah, true. I played the Sherlock Holmes games. I know this. 
Staying up all night is the best excuse to drink lots of coffee. Yes, without a doubt. Yes, Chloe Price was here. I'm so sorry, William. It's not fair you had to die twice. Hmm, it worked for Buffy. Me and Daddy. So we've got an email here. I should have known just erasing that phone message wouldn't stop the police. Miss Price, this is Officer Anderson Barry, and since we have your contact info and file here, we'd like you to come by the station on Monday morning at approximately 8am to answer a few questions about any information you may have re regarding a recent break-in at Blackwell Academy and the fact your car was identified in the parking lot around the same time. Look forward to clearing this up. Officer Barry, AP, ABPD. This butterfly photo seems like a million years ago. How much time have I altered since? Good question. I have no idea what time it is anymore. Ever. So close, yet so far away. We have to do three main things. Right. Um, uh, what things? One, decipher Frank's logbook. Two, get Nathan's phone to find out where he's been during the Vortex Club parties with Kate and Rachel. And see whatever hidden shit he's got in his messages. Three, beat Step Douche Dan until he tells us about Frank, Nathan, and the darkroom. Too bad I don't have a gun anymore. Yes, that's the solution. We'll have to do this on our own. Dude, at least let me kick his ass, then rewind. <sighs> Fine, whatevs. It's your power. Which I can't waste on shit like that. Or Blackwell would be in big trouble. You didn't even let me take that money to pay Frank off. And I'm glad. We have to be better than that. I know. You should get busy in the garage to see what dirt you can dig up. I'm gonna cyberstalk some names and see where that leads. Or to who. And be careful of Stepcrack. He's not gonna be a happy camper after you reamed him yesterday and Mom is giving him the boot. I'm on it, partner. Okay, was there anything else? I can't abuse this level of my rewind power. It's way too dangerous, and I need to navigate the present without messing up the past. That's why I don't want to abuse the power. That's why I've been so adamant in not using it as much as I possibly can. Oh, oh no. bird! That poor little bird has been trapped in here. Did that fly into the bathroom? Is that a ghost? Oh, there's a bird. Wait, where's the light switch? Hi, birdie. Come on. Shoo. You can go. Okay, seriously. I swear I seen a ghost. <laughs> like, not like an actual ghost, but... Yeah. <laughs> it was like there was glow-in-the-dark stickers. I'm not weird, I promise. Oh, that blue dye makes me so happy. It means the real Chloe is back with me. I wonder what I would look like with blue hair. Hmm, something to think about. Last time I wanted to splash some water on my face, my whole life changed. Oh, well, I splashed water on my face again. Whoops. Um, let's turn the light off. I want to save them their electricity bills. Did I even do that when I was in the previous universe? I don't remember. Oh! This might be the last poster advertising Arcadia Bay after tomorrow night. Wait, where'd the bird go? Shoe, birdie, shoe. <gasps> oh! oh shit! Poor thing. Okay, I'm rewinding it because I feel awful. And it made me jump. Sorry, bird. Give me a second. I know I just said I wouldn't abuse my power for trivial things. But I killed a fucking bird, so... Fly. Be free. That's not a trivial thing. Jesus, that genuinely made me jump. Okay, just so they save any heating bills, and so the bird doesn't come back in. Watch they go in here and suddenly there's a bunch of birds. Since David might be in there, I better mosey along for a change. Good point. Hopefully there isn't a bunch of birds in there then. 
Oh, oh yeah, left mouse one. I'm like, why am I not going? Oh. Hi. How's it going? You won this battle, Max. You broke up my family. I salute you. David, I didn't try to hurt you. Ever. But I won't let anybody hurt Chloe. Too late, isn't it? You just better be damn careful with her. Don't you wander off into the dark. Someone's been listening to a lot of Death Cab for Cooey because I'll follow you into the dark. I think that was them that sang that song. Anyway, uh, let's look around. David isn't any different from me when he's looking at those family photos. We've looked at these a few times. Oh, we've got two texts from Warren. Yo, yo, Max, your friend Chloe texted me that I'm out the look now. Shh. We'll catch up. Okay. Uh, yo, yo, Max, your friend Chloe texted me that I'm out the look now. She sounds hot, so I get why. Chloe actually texted you? I sure didn't have her number. Now I get why you didn't want to go eight with me. You should go with Chloe. I'm sure looks cool enough for you. I have a lot of cool friends, like you. Yes, you do. Just my luck. And mine. I have to jet. TTYL. Hope so. Uh, we also have other texts from a lot of people just now. Um. Maxine, what the heck is going off the weather up there? Are they doing military tests or something? You're right in the eye of the storm. Yes, I even killed my plant, Lisa. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. Get another. One plant was stressful enough. I'm back to books. Talk soon. XO Max O. Oh, okay. Uh, Kate. So we're texting her on the... The 9th. The 9th of September, okay. Uh, Max, thank you for my heart for reaching out to me on the roof. You're the only one who was there for me at school. The only one who truly cared. I have to believe you were sent to give me hope. You did so much more than that. My father was grateful as well. Oh, that was my knee. The crack there. Apologies about that. Uh, you did so much more than that. My father was grateful as well. You'll always be in our prayers. Love and blessings, your friend Kate. Uh, hey Kate, I'm so glad you're okay. I'll visit you as soon as I can. Promise. Um, 12 hours later. Max, how are you? I hope you can still visit me this week. I have some important things to talk about. Of course I'm still coming to visit you. Can't stop me. I miss you. And my bunny. We all miss you. And your bunny misses you. Yeah, you're such a good fr you're such a great friend. Thank you so much. Can't wait to see you. XO Maxo. Uh Justin. We were texting. Uh the Pendle. Sorry, my phone was in my bag. And then on the ninth. Hey Justin, you busy? Max Vax, I'm busy blazing. What up? Do you know Frank Bowers? Grox. That's it. I mean I mean, that's it? Ask Nathan. He knows him, I think. Okay, I'm on it. Thanks, Justin. For what? Uh, Juliet. Hey Max, I hope you're okay after everything. You might be busy, but feel free to call me anytime. Hey Juliet, are you busy? No time to be busy. You never text me. What's going down? Besides everything? I was just curious if you heard of a guy named Frank who lives in an RV around town. You mean a van down by the river? I heard he's a sketchy meth head. That's about it. Why? You doing your own investigation without my help? No, just bored. Talk soon. Thanks. Okay, but you can't keep secrets from Ace reporter Juliet Watson. Hello? Uh, or dad? Um. Maxine, pop here. I'm sorry I haven't gotten in touch sooner. I know your mum is very proud of you for saving that girl. As am I. We have no doubt sending you to Blackwell was the best thing you've ever demanded we do. It makes us so proud to read about you in the news and see actual video of you walking down from the roof of that girl. If you want to come back home to relax, maybe go to a high school around here. The door is wide open. Love, Pop. Thanks, Pop. It's been a whirlwind here. Whirlwind here. Not ready to come home yet. Talk later, Max. OXO. Hey, honey. I just got a weird text warning me that my nosy daughter better stop watching others and look out for herself. Is this some kind of school prank? And it's from a block number. Oh, I'm so sorry. Some jackass in my class thought it'd be funny to send. It's not. I don't like strangers having my number, okay? Me neither, sorry. I'm just being a dad. I know this has been a tough week for you. 
it's almost over. I'll call you guys later. Love you. From Courtney. Hey girlfriend, let me know when you want to come by my room and I'll give you a fashion makeover. Oh thanks Courtney. I'm swapped off homework now but I'll check in with you later. Thanks again for the offer. And text from Chloe. Uh, on the 9th. Hey man, I suck again. Sorry I got in your face today and took out my bullshit rage on my best friend. Chloe, I understand. You're going through a lot. We all are. Besides, I threw your beanie out the window and busted out my rewind. <laughs> okay, that is your one get out of emoji jail free card. Oh yeah, Chloe in the alternate verse sent us uh, an emoji. But we need to stock up in six coffee and candy for an all nighter. We have to get into Rachel and keep detective mode. Excellent, dear Watson. I'll bring my thinking cap. No worries, I have a beanie. I'll swing by and pick you up. Sweet, I'll be ready. XOXO. And that was no emoji. <laughs> Um, so we have that picture that we took of Chloe. Uh, diary. So we have quite a few diary entries right now. October 10th, dear diary. Um, is there anything back here? Okay, no. October 10th, dear diary. Let's never do the time warp again. I can't even begin to explain what happened. If I think too hard about the ramifications, my brain might melt. When I try to describe it, it's as if I'm describing something that happened to someone else. Chloe was so upset when we discovered that Rachel had actually been involved with Frank Bowers and she just blew up. I can never talk to her when she's like this and I just get so tired of having to walk on eggshells around her emotions. She still blames William for her messed up life, no matter how much she knows she's just being unfair. I can't say that I wouldn't be just as messed up, not that I'm not in my own way. In my room, all I could think was, I wish I could go back in time and help Chloe. And suddenly I was looking at the photograph William had taken of us on the day he died. It started pulsing like it was 3D. Like I could see inside the photograph. Then, I found myself actually back in the photo to when I was 13 years old. I was back in Chloe's kitchen in the year 2008. With Chloe and William. Right before he left to pick up Joyce for the last time. Since my powers somehow morphed to this new level of rewind, I decided there was no way I was going to let William die again. So I played hide the keys until he had no other option but to take the bus. I was so happy that I actually saved William. I never thought about what could go wrong. That's wrong. I thought about it a lot. <laughs> I knew I was screwed when I came out of my epic room and saw Victoria Chase. But now she was my friend. And I was a member of the Vortex Club. Enough said. I knew I'd screwed up. And then I felt sick thinking about what might have changed with Chloe. I had a clue when I saw David Madsen driving the school bus. He sure didn't look so threatening anymore. I didn't want to know how he ended up as a bus driver instead of with Joyce. I felt my heart drop when I rushed to Chloe's house, so when William opened the door, I prepared myself for the worst. That's when Chloe rolled forward in her wheelchair, paralysed from the neck down. I didn't even know what to say, so I covered my mouth in it, my typical gesture of shock and stupid. But Chloe's smile was so genuine and beautiful, I almost cried. I had to adjust to everything without freaking out or telling Chloe that he actually altered time and space to save her father, but got her in a car accident so she could never walk again. The thing is, she was still Chloe just minus all the rage. This Chloe was just grateful to be alive and have her family watching over her. Chloe begged me to spend the night, and of course I did. I noticed how run down parts of her home were, compared to before. I saw the incredible expensive equipment that Chloe now requires, including her new garage room. Sorry, David. Even though I felt awful and disconnected, Chloe was just so bubbly and excited to hang out with me again, especially since I flaked on her pretty hardcore after her accident. Even in an alternate universe, I'm a shitty friend. Chloe's world was so new and unique to me, especially her strength and kindness and pain. She needed a whole pharmacy to get her through the day. I didn't feel sorry for her. I felt in awe with her attitude. This Chloe didn't blame anybody for her condition, even though she had the right. We strolled down the beach and saw the beach whales that proved something bad was happening in both realities. And then Chloe asked me to put her to sleep. The accident left her body pretty much broken. Her lungs stopped working properly and she was basically dying a slow, painful death. She also felt so guilty about her parents sacrificing dwindling income. She wasn't erratic or tortured about this request. Just practical. But she made me feel even more terrible for putting her in this situation. I agreed to help her, simply because she explained that she wanted to have a choice for the last time in her life. How could I argue with that? 
especially since I knew I screwed up the entire universe by making a simple decision. And I knew I would have to go back eventually and accept the timeline that actually happened. So Chloe and I had one last movie night watching Blade Runner, falling asleep to the sounds of Vangelis, and when I woke up, I put my best friend to sleep. However... After my visit to Chloe's new world, I knew it was time to go to Max, go Max to the future. I'd seen the result of my temporal tampering and I got scared thinking my new power wouldn't even work anymore. That would have been cruel karma. Fortunately, I was able to project myself into the photograph once again and I undid everything I had done. Goodbye, William. Again. Hello, David. Again. I've never been so glad to see Chloe in my life. The second I saw her blue hair and that beautiful pissed off face, I wanted to kiss her again. And I couldn't even tell her where I'd been, or why. It'd be one more thing to alienate Chloe from me and the world. I had to get refocused in the search for Rachel. Chloe had been so busy for detective work while I was in my alternate timeline. Okay. So we'll look around. Those poor whales are like beached angels. What is going on here? Um, travel money. Looks like they're back on the road to Paris. They'll go there one day. I know they will. Somehow I existed in this whole other reality, but I, I don't know what happened. The more I use my power, the more I see how little control I have over what happens. Now Max Caulfield exists in two or maybe three different realities. How can I have a destiny? If these alternate lives exist, I hate the thought of William and Joyce finding Chloe like that. <sighs> Thinking about all these lifelines almost makes my head hurt worse than the rewind. So I just noticed the post-it note in the fridge that I want to see. Eh, uh, not the fridge. That's not a fridge. That's a fridge. But there's something on it anyway. Ouch. David, do not be here when I get back from work. I mean it, J. Price. Okay, but I wanted to see the one in the microwave. It was just completely accidental that, uh, there was also one in the fridge. Okay, love you, mom. Okay, so she must have put food in there for Chloe. To think this all started with my vision of a tornado. Eco apocalypse now. Where Arcadia Bay was until now considered a quaint fishing and tourist nook on the Oregon coast. The town that time forgot is since the beginning of this week, in the literal Ivan environmental storm. Starting with a freak snowfall, an unprecedented eclipse, dying birds, and now a half dozen beached whales, Arcadia Bay's strange weather is being studied by prominent state and national scientists, apparently including NESA, or NASA, as it's commonly called. Sorry, I have no idea why I said NESA. What's even more incredible than these eco-phenomena is the fact that not a single meteorologist has offered any actual theory or even reason for this atmospheric havoc continued on the next page. Which for some reason we never ever fucking look at. Let's take a look around outside. Wait. Is that the bird I... Oh. No, it's not. I hope it's the bird... Well, no, I don't hope it's the bird I saved. I hope the bird I saved is out there living happy bird lives. But there's a lot of dead birds out here, which is making me really sad and uncomfortable. And want to go back inside because I can't handle this. Poor birds. I guess David wasn't in the mood to clean up. Should we maybe do something about this? Like, I don't know, tidy up for them? William never finished painting that wall. Maybe we should paint that too. Maybe we should just help. We should move in here with them. It's fine. Oh, it's just a fool. Okay, I thought that was another dead bird. Joyce must be so upset. Are you helping anybody, Max? Honestly, I think I'm fucking everything up. Okay, let's go in the garage. 
It looks like David finished his car repairs. Maybe there's some new clues around. I also have an email. I promise I'll help Miss Grant next time. If there is one. As per a discussion about the new campus surveillance system, Miss Grant has informed me that her petition was only one avenue of protest. While we initiate this new era of Blackwell security, we must find a middle ground between safety and privacy for our oh, students. Oh, Miss Grant. Twist that knife. I don't need a surveillance camera to see this suspension coming. Best of luck to you, Miss Grant. At least he has one weird fan. Dear Mr. Madsen, I just wanted to let you know, I think it's bullshit what happened to you in this school has too many libtard metrosexuals who don't appreciate your military. I felt safe in my dorm when you were in charge and I thought about you protecting me. I hope you'll come back to Blackwell and make sure we are all safe at night. I am scared of this skill from Anonymous. The thing is, I'm a very, very liberal person and I, I've had people message me about the whole security camera thing. Security cameras are just a part of like my culture at least and it's commonplace here and I felt comfortable having them and they've helped me. Um, but, I mean, they've been used in cases uh, where I was a victim. So they've, they've helped me. Wish I had surveillance footage of that conversation. From David to Raymond Wells, uh, I apologise for my outburst yesterday in your office. I was upset about losing my position at Blackwell without a complete investigation of the facts and based solely on the claims of untrustworthy students. There is a cancer at Blackwell Academy and without me it will continue to spread. Sincerely, Madsen. Surveillance cameras at Pan Estates? David must be working for the Prescotts too. Okay. Either Chloe stole another gun, or David is out there armed. Well, that's a scary thought. Oh, jeez. David is packing up wedding stuff, too. Oh, that makes me sad. It was so incredible to see William again. I wish Chloe could too. There's more to David Madsen than meets the eye. He should finish this letter to Joyce. Joyce, you know I'm not good at explaining myself or why I act the way I do sometimes. I only know that nobody has ever understood me the way you do. I would never do anything to hurt you or Chloe. Taking care of my family is my number one mission. Yes, I overshot the bounds of the surveillance and suspicion and I am truly sorry and ashamed. There are dark things happening in Arcadia Bay I have never told you. You're my wife and partner, and I know we should ne we should have no secrets. I intended to tell you everything, but I wanted more proof. Instead, a student almost committed suicide in my watch. He kicked me out of my favourite home, and my stepdaughter hates me. Please let me... Okay, there's... There's a lot to David that we don't know. I wonder if David is going to the party. End of the world party, Vortex Club. I'm guessing that's going to happen in the last episode, that party. Whoa, that is a serious padlock on that locker. Hey, David, what you hiding? So, how do we get into it? We need to know for the combination. Once, I don't have time to search for the code. Oh, I need to find a way to break this padlock. Okay, well, I guess we're breaking it then. Good, because I had no idea how I was going to find the combination. Um. Is there any tools? I mean, it's a garage, so you would think. So, thank you. Okay, I can use that crowbar to pry open the locker. Sorry, David, but I bet you would do the same thing as me. You probably would. Oh, maps, notes, coordinates, photos of Kate, Nathan. Oh, yes. 3.17 p.m. Blackwell Academy parking. Kate Marsh, she knows something. Latches and longitudes. Is that a Twin Peaks reference? Um, photos of Nathan, me, or Max, I should say. I am Max, okay? And, um, the 
dude who's into me, whose name I can't remember, my pal, Wayne, Warren, <laughs> one of them, uh, car's license plate, something pay up, okay. Score. Back to Chloe now. Is there nothing else in there we could have took or taken? I guess not. Back upstairs. Or Yo, Chloe! Are you ready yet? I have to get back to my dorm. Are we happy? Very happy. I hit the secret file jackpot. Kate, Nathan, and Rachel. Plus some location coordinates. David is like a one-man surveillance army. Now let's get the hell out of here before we get busted. But I absolutely have to go see Kate in the hospital right now. I want to find out how she's doing. What about the bunny? Who look at, who's looking after the bunny? How's the bunny doing? I want the bunny to be okay. This is definitely Kate's floor. The hospitals always freak me out. I, I hear you. But imagine how Kate feels. I'm so glad I, I get to see her again. I hope it's not too weird for her. No, she'll be stoked to see you. Who wouldn't be? This be it. I'm a little nervous. Just go in there and be your friend. I'll wait out here so you can chill by yourselves. I was a total dick for blowing a fuse when you answered Kate's call the other day. Good thing you ignored me. I had no idea what shit she was going through. And you saved her. Like me. I'm sorry. Thanks, Chloe. But don't be sorry. We're all on the same team. Team Max. Let Kate know we're gonna string Nathan up by his balls then. Oh yes. <laughs> I'm on it. Okay. I'll be good to see Kate again. Hey, Kate. Max! Oh, Kate. I thought I'd never see you again. I feel so ridiculous. I'm so sorry. Kate. Listen to me. You have nothing to be sorry about. Other people do. You do not know how happy I am to see you. You look awesome. Is it a stupid question if I ask how you're doing? Now that you're here, I'm doing even better. I'm so grateful to you for coming up to the roof to talk me down. Max, I felt so lost and alone. When I saw how much you cared, how hard you were trying, you made me realize I wasn't alone. Thank you. Kate, there are so many people who love you and want to help you. I know. You should see all the letters and postcards. I gave most of the flowers to other patients here because they need them more than me. I'm keeping the balloons, though. <laughs> One of the nurses gave me some pen and paper so I could do some drawings. I love your illustrations. They got kind of dark there for a while, but I have an idea for a new children's book about bullying. I was thinking of having some photographs in there too. I hope that's a subtle hint that you'll let me take the photographs for the book. Was that subtle? You better take the pictures, Max. I'm going to be here for another day until my family comes out to visit. How are they treating you? Like they need to protect me forever. They're so upset. And I know they feel guilty, even though they didn't do anything. I was surprised how many students from Blackwell wrote me. Daniel, Mr. Jefferson, even Victoria wrote me a very sweet note. And I believe she was being real. Me too. I'm glad you believe again, Kate. I'm working on it, Max. I just pray I can get this drawing right. You will. I'm going to look around at your room first, and then we can talk after I've snipped. Principal Wells knows how to step it up when he wants to. Uh, dear Kate, I just want to express my deepest wish for a speedy recovery in the Blackwell Academy as United in prayers for your return. 
The students and faculty have organised a rally in your honour and I've never seen such outpouring of academic and community support for any student in our history. I know my words may mean little given your circumstances, but it's important you know that we do care. If you need any assistance at all, please do not hesitate to ask. Sincerely, Principal Raymond Wells. Got some postcards. That is so sweet. Even Victoria signed. But not Nathan. In our th hearts and thoughts, Stella, Justin, Hayden, River S. <gasps> River Song. Uh, Ewan, Daniel, Max, Zach, Luke, Warren, Courtney. Luke? I don't know. No, Luke's here. Don't know who that is. Victoria. We love you, Kate Blackwell Academy. Trevor, Rory, Alyssa. And whatever the other things are. We signed it as well. Max. Victoria Chase might be queen bitch, but she's not evil. Kate, I know you hate me and you should, but I only want to see your smile again. Please let me know if you need anything, Exovic. But then, sh didn't she, s she was speaking to um the photography teacher in the last episode and she brought up Kate and didn't seem very forgiving? I don't know. Not very forgiving, very um, sorry. Thank you, sisters. You really saved Kate. Hmm. No, I don't want to leave the hospital yet. That'd be so rude if I just went away without talking to her. Oh, I love Kate's happy rainbow flock. Where is she? I miss my banana. Bored cat. I like bored cat. What's she reading? Good to see that Kate is still working on her book report. Oh, she's still working away. Nice. Um, let's sit for a little bit. It's amazing to just sit here quiet with Kate again. I don't think I'll ever know how much destiny I'm changing. But whoever said we only have a single fate? <sighs> Time travel is such a mindfuck. Pretty much. Okay. Let's stand. Uh, can we look at the blinds? I don't think get well is quite apropos. If this gets Kate through the night, so be it. She has some flowers. Those are nice flowers. And from Taylor? Wow, props to her. Okay, let's... Kate, it is so good to hang out with you again. Max, I owe you so much. And I can tell you want to talk to me about something. Let's talk about uh, Kate first. Let's talk about herself. I always want to talk to you. We missed our tea session this week. That was so not cool. We need to plan, like, a tea shop tour of Portland. Yes. Oh, yes. And you could bring Warren along, too. No boys allowed. <laughs> you are funny, Max. And right. Do people think me and Warren are a couple? Come on. Uh, let's talk about Victoria. I saw Victoria's letter. How does that make you feel? Max, I know Victoria can be a... Uh, not nice. <laughs> but I do believe in forgiveness and redemption. I might be naive, but... I feel her struggle. Me too. I could have taken a picture of her covered in paint, but I didn't, and we had a genuine moment. We all have our moments. Why do you think she acts so mean? She's insecure. She's insecure. If you're comfortable with yourself, you don't need to act superior. Victoria doesn't look like she has much to be insecure about. If anybody could make Victoria see the light, it would be Kate Marsh. No. I think it will take more than that, Max. Uh, what? Okay, let's talk about Nathan. The Nathan thing. I want you to know I'm this close to getting all the info I need about Nathan. Nathan Prescott has to pay for what he did. And we have to stop him from hurting anybody else. I wish I could have gotten his ass kicked out of Blackwell. Me too. But his dad would never let that happen. I thought I had a tough family. 
So what is going on with him now? I assume he'll show up at the Vortex Club party tonight like nothing happened. And nobody can do anything to him after what he did. We're going to stop him. I just have to find Nathan's room number, get inside, and get the clues I need. Max, please let me help. I can get the number, and I'll text it to you, okay? Of course, Kate. I can't do this without you. Now it's time for Nathan to watch out for us. I have to get back to our uh, mission. You don't know how much it means to see you again. I do. That's why I love you, Max. Thanks for taking care of my bunny. Tell Alice I'll see her soon. So, um, it's the part tonight. Okay, I better go talk to the bunny. And I'll, you know, investigate this thing, but also talk to the bunny. Bye, Kate. Hi, Chloe. Well, how is she? She's still Kate Marsh. Thank God. I'm glad we came to see her. Thanks for coming with me. Now let's go pay a visit to Nathan Prescott. That little prick is not going to be glad when he sees us. <laughs>